We spent time going through example one, going through all the details of each of the individual steps of the test. Example two and three, I'm going to leave for you to work. Make sure you could arrive at all the correct conclusions. Again, you'd want to focus on setting up the hypotheses, writing the appropriate conclusions to generate a full answer to a question like this. But we can outline our basic process. For, so our first, step, our first step would be to assess normality. In this case, we get p-values of 0 0.0724 and 0 0.2445. Then we would test our variances. In this case, we get a p-value of 0 0.7292. And then we would actually test the claim. So you'll need to read through the information of the problem, identify what those hypotheses should be determine whether this p-value would lead you to run a pooled t-test or just a two-sample t-test. So we would test our claim, and you should get a p-value of zero less than 0 0.0001. So again, make sure you know how to work through that problem like that from start to finish, using example one as the template. For example three, we can provide the same information. So we'd assess the normality first. And we would get p-values of 0 0.1249 and 0 0.4221. We would test the variances and get a p-value equal to 0 0.9334. And then test the claim and get a p-value of 0 0.7751. So again, same idea. You'd want to assess the normality, make sure you know how to reach those appropriate conclusions, test the variances, see if that leads you to running a pooled t-test or just a two-sample t-test, and then set up the actual hypotheses to test the claim and the problem, arrive at this p-value, and then interpret those results. So again, make sure you can work through both of those examples. If you do have questions about them, feel free to contact me. You want to make sure that you understand this process come exam time.